Hey, I'm currently working on a video that's like half an hour long and as you can imagine it's taking me a bit of time so I figured I would make a shorter video to tide you over until that other video is out. I'm a little late to the trend but I wanted to make a tier list, only instead of making a wacky and fun tier list, like one for drugs. <laughs> or gender reveal parties, I'm gonna put one together for the different trading locations in ESO. Wow, I am so cool. So if you're unfamiliar with this concept, it's pretty self-explanatory. You're basically assigning grades to whatever noun is being evaluated. In this case, I'll be evaluating traders or locations. These terms can be used interchangeably by how ideal they are for trading. Let's take a look at the criteria that I use to judge these different locations. Just like on Earth, the citizens of Nern like convenience. Having to take no more than a couple of steps after porting into a zone to access the traders is wonderful. Having to play Mount Simulator or Oriel Forbid go through another loading screen is not. Speaking of loading screens, you may have heard the meme about how the toughest raid boss in ESO is the loading screen boss. Whoever coined that do got a point though. So it should come as no surprise that having to endure multiple loading screens just to reach a trader is big lame. So unfortunately, that means that any traders located in Outlaws Refuges are automatically not going to place so well on this tier list. Especially when so many of those traders also take a while to get to once you've loaded into the refuge, and even more so if they're also locked behind DLC. Damn, I'm nailing these segues today. You may have noticed a theme of convenience and accessibility start to form here. Continuing on with that theme, the better trading locations are ones that are accessible to everyone, meaning part of the ESO base game. There are a lot of ESO DLCs and chapters, and not everyone may necessarily have them all for one reason or another, meaning those people simply won't be able to shop there, even if they wanted to. Some locations are naturally chock full of players. Players typically gather and spend a lot of time in certain zones for the following reasons. It's a pledge city, somewhere where you grab your pledges and wait for a hot minute, or 30, for that dungeon queue to pop. It's a crafting city, a place where all of the crafting stations and the writ drop-off spot are located in close proximity to one another. Thus, many players choose to do their daily writs in this area. It's a social hub, a place that's known for having people that partake in interesting <laughs> discussions in zone chat or people to form pickup groups to wipe in trials for two hours. You'll find that larger crowds gather by the traders and where is sell faster as a result of all of these players being in these locations. It's also why I would rank a place like Daggerfall in Glenumbra higher than Ebonheart in Stonefalls, despite the fact that both of these spots would otherwise appear to be very similar. Because on PCNA, Daggerfall is a pretty infamous zone check copy pasta factory. It's just more populated. Alright, I'm gonna get started now, but I'm gonna keep chatting while I rank everything to be time efficient. I also have some disclaimers that I want to throw out there. Firstly, I play on PCNA, so I'm ranking these from a PCNA perspective. My understanding is that things are slightly different on the PCEU and console side of things, but the criteria that I've just finished mentioning should all mostly carry over no matter what server you play on. Don't try to tell me that the Merkmire Outlaws Refuge is more bussin' than Mournhold on like Xbox EU, okay? I won't hear it. And secondly, I'm ranking trading stalls and locations, not guilds. The latter would be an entirely subjective matter anyways. Elements such as the community, the vibes, the sales requirements would no doubt play into how ideal a trading guild is for you, or how you would choose to rank that guild in your own figurative tier list of sorts. Just because a location ranks poorly on this tier list, that doesn't mean that this grade is at all indicative of an actual guild that typically holds a trader in this spot. I mean, shit, not to brag or anything, but I think that my guild is the best one on PCNA and we held a pretty mid-tier trader for like a year or so. <laughs> but in all seriousness, the point of this video is to help you better understand which locations are more ideal for trading and why. It's perfectly reasonable for you to be able to obtain some big PP sales numbers even in less than ideal locations. Speaking of, oh my god, again with the segues, if you play on PC, there's something huge that you can do to really help your guild out, especially if your trader isn't located in a super ideal spot. And that's using the TTC add-on. 
I'm not a trading add-on Andy, so pardon the oversimplified description, but by running the TTC add-on and client, all of the items in your guild store will be uploaded to the TTC site, which will allow shoppers to search and find items in your guild's inventory. I'll throw up some stuff on the screen and include a link in the description that better explains what exactly you have to do. This helps smaller guilds out immensely by allowing their inventory to be broadcasted and searchable to tons of players. People may not typically hang out in these certain locations, but if they find what they're looking for in TTC, they'll go out of their way to get to you. I was reminded of this the other day when I used TTC to search for this one item that I'm currently flipping for gold, and I saw a recent entry for that item that was listed for 90% below the market value in a lower tier trading zone. When I got to the trader and searched for that item, I saw that it had actually been up on that trader for a couple days. I was surprised that no one had bought it yet considering how cheap it was and considering the fact that I've been able to list this item for a much more substantial amount of gold and it still flies off the shelves in my trading guilds. To me, this was an indication of how the zone naturally didn't get a whole lot of traffic, which wasn't so much news to me, but also that people in that guild must not run the TTC add-on. On the flip side, pun not intended, I think that our guild, despite having a trader located in a zone that wasn't super ideal for trading, was able to pull off, on average, around 100 mil to 150 mil in sales each week from 200 traders because we did have a bunch of people running the TTC add-on, and thus, we were able to bring travelers far and wide to our humble little stall in Mattel. Also, who am I kidding? We have a bunch of five-head traders in our guild too, of course. So given everything that I've mentioned, here is where I would rank all of the trading locations in Tamriel. I think it's worthwhile to mention that I could be even more nitpicky and explain how, even within cities, there are certain traders that, on average, get much more sales than others in the same location just based on their spot within the zone and even their reputation. It's also worth mentioning that having a trader in a spot that's specific to an event, like being in Windhelm during the New Life Festival, also helps boost sales. But I wanted to keep this video brief and just give you all a general overview of the topic. If you're new to the trading scene, I hope that this can give you a better understanding of what zones are most ideal for trading, and likewise, which spots are most sought after. But I implore you to keep in mind that what truly makes a great trading guild goes far beyond the location of its trader. Alright, that's all for this video. Huge shout out to my YouTube members for sponsoring this content, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Cheers.